Hi there, I'm Sue Elvis from the blog Stories of an Unschooling Family. Welcome to my video. Today I want to talk about teenagers, how we can keep them safe. And this morning I was looking through some of my draft blog posts. I don't know if other bloggers have a long list of posts that never get finished, never get published. And I found this post about teenagers. And the post was written completely. I had actually finished the post, but it hadn't been published. And I began to think, why didn't I publish it? And I think the reason is because it's a post that goes against common opinion, the, the popular opinion. And it was written in response to something that I read on the internet. I It was a post about how this mother had set down all these rules, strict rules, to protect her teenagers. And the, there were hundreds of comments on it. Now, most of them said, you are a fantastic mother, that you care so much about your teenagers, that you're willing to not be the friend to your teenager, but to do what is right, to make rules that aren't popular, that your teenager won't like, but they, these rules will keep your child safe. And that's the most important thing. Being a friend to your teenager is not important. What is, is keeping your teenager safe. And I thought about this for a while, and I disagree with the post entirely. And I sat down and I wrote a response as a blog post. And then for some reason, I probably lost my courage and didn't actually post it. But I'm going to I'm going to talk about that this today. Maybe I'll get a second chance at exploring this topic and maybe I'll even go over to my blog and post this post. Yeah, be brave about it. I think sometimes we need to go against the, uh, the popular opinion and give some other ideas for people to think about. And the first thing is, are there things that we don't want our teenagers to be involved with? Are there dangers out there in the world? And the answer to this is, of course there are. There, we don't, of course we don't want our kids to get involved with drugs. Uh, late night parties maybe, where they'll get into trouble. We do want them to dress in maybe a modest fashion. Uh, other things, the certain books, certain movies that we might feel would be a bad influence on our teenagers. Maybe certain people that we wouldn't want them to associate with. Lots of different worries in having teenagers. It's all very well when our kids are small and we know what they're doing. They're part of the smaller circle of the family. They're with us most of the time. It's very easy to keep them safe. But once children grow into teenage, teenagers uh, and beyond, we're not always around on the scene. And how do we ensure that they are safe. Do we make strict rules? You have to be home by a certain hour, certain hour of the night. Uh, you can only go to certain types of parties. These are the rules you have to abide by when you're choosing clothes. Now if you want to watch uh, a movie you have to check with me first to, to see if I approve of it. The same with books. Yeah, lots and lots of rules. Rules to do with how do you use your phone and what, how, where you go on the internet. The rules could be endless. I've also seen blog posts where people have written down all these rules, and an awful lot of them, big long lists of them, and they have become the family rules. The family rules for the teenagers because it's only the teenagers who have to abide by them. Parents don't. And... Yes, people applaud parents who do this, and I applaud them too in a way because I think that these sort of rules are written out of love. If we didn't love, if we didn't care, we wouldn't worry, there would be no need for rules. So parents that write such rules I think are very, very loving, very caring parents. And maybe people would think that I'm not very loving and caring. I'm not very responsible because I haven't written such rules. I'm trying a different approach with my family. 
What I'm doing is trusting that my kids will make the right choices, but I'm not standing back and saying it's all up to you, you're free to make your own choices. What I'm doing is being what I hope is a good example, practicing what I hope my kids will pick up on, that they will pick up on my and um, also my husband's beliefs and our values because we have a good relationship, that we're connected, that we can talk about these things together. Uh, it's not really easy, I don't think. I think but building up those connections between teenagers and parents, it doesn't start at teenage years. It starts when they're very small. And it's just a continuation so that when you get to the teenage years, you've done all the basic work. Your, your kids are willing to listen to you we're will it, because we're willing to listen to them. It's all reciprocal. If we want our kids to listen to us, to respect us and our beliefs, we have to listen to them. We can't, and when we listen, we can't sort of say, hey, I don't think that that opinion is very good. You're off track there. We have to listen carefully. We have to have discussions, accept our kids, uh, what they're saying, engage in fruitful discussions, not impose our views upon them, but get to the stage where they're willing to listen to us and hopefully uh, take on board what we are saying, take on our values. So, where was I? <laughs> Kids and rules. The reason I think rules don't work is that parents have to police those rules. Once they've made those two dozen rules or so, a parent is now in the position where they're going to have to make sure that their kids aren't breaking those rules. Uh, this can be very difficult. I have tried this with my first daughter. I used to make various rules and then I used to get suspicious. Why is she breaking the rules? And then you have got to uh, almost catch them breaking the rules and you, could talk, you worry about it, you know, you think they're not here, they're not in front of me, perhaps they're out doing things that I don't want them to do, so you start to question them, question people around them, become suspicious and it's no way to live, you never feel peaceful about it. Um, yes, I don't think that putting, making rules really works, it sets you up for battles because what if kids break those rules? then you've got to do something about it. It's no good making a rule that can be broken and then just saying, oh well, they broke the rule, do better next time. Uh, you have to battle with your kids because of course they don't want on a lot of times to f fall in line. A lot of times they don't see the sense of the rule. They'll go, they might want to look for opportunities where they can break them. So being a good example, building up those connections with our children, being able to respect and trust our kids because they trust and respect us, it's not an easy thing to do. But I do believe it's the right thing to do and I do believe it's much easier than uh, policing rules. It also feels a lot better. So after I wrote this blog post, well, while I was in the middle of writing it, I, got, I went over to my girls, I knocked on the door of my be girl's bedroom, I said, hey girls, I'm writing a blog post about teenagers and rules and other ways of making sure teenagers keep safe from the dangers of the world. I said, what would happen if I said to you, uh, you can't watch that movie, it's X-rated, you can't watch, read that book, I don't like the language in it, or I said, you can't go to that late night party that you want to go to. And do you know what my girls did? They laughed. They said, Mom, are we likely to come to you and say, we want to go to this late night party where there might be drugs? Or are we likely to want to go and watch an unsuitable movie or read an unsuitable book? And yes, they thought it was silly that I'd even asked the question. And I think this led me to the thought, that it is possible to bring up children so that when they reach their teenage years they won't even consider doing the things that we're worried about. That our trust and respect and our relationships will keep them safe because they have no desire to go out there and do all the things that we assume that they will want to do. So that rather reassured me and yeah, we had a bit of a laugh over that. 
but it's but are my kids are safe proof, proof you know can I guarantee that they will never get into any trouble that they won't be tempted one day just to go out there and do something which I wouldn't approve of which I think is dangerous and maybe not something that they should be doing and I don't think it is possible to uh, to say my kids will never do anything wrong I've done my best with them and I've got pretty good confidence in them. I do trust them. But like everybody, if myself included, none of us are perfect. My children are not perfect children. I'm not a perfect mother. None of us are perfect. We can never get to that stage where we can say 100% um, that we are sure that our children will never do anything that they shouldn't be doing. But I do believe that the close relationship that we have with our children will ensure that if they get themselves into any kind of trouble, there will come a point where they'll come to us and say, Hey, Mum, I'm in a bit of trouble here. Can you help me? I want to talk this over. That the communication lines will be open, that they will feel that they can come and talk to us about anything that they're not happy that they have done or a problem that they have got themselves into and they can even feel that they can come to us and tell us about the things that uh, they're not sure that they should be doing and they just want a, a listening ear about it because I'm sure that if kids have broken rules the last thing they want to do is come and confess it to their parents they want to keep it a secret not get into any trouble and even if our kids do go off the rails for a while I do have confidence that somewhere along the track they will come back. This is their family. This is where they're loved. This is where they have been listened to all their lives. They're respected and trusted. It's the place that they will return. So I don't know why I didn't post this particular post. Was it a case that I wasn't confident of my own opinion? Well, look, I've made a blog. I've, I've made that blog post. I've written it. I've made a video about it now. I'm going to put it there, up there on YouTube. And if you'd like to come along and say I'm wrong, well, we can have a discussion about it, can't we? But this is what I'm going to put out there today. So, if you would like to read my blog post, I has not got a title at the moment. That's the only thing that I didn't put in to the blog post. I wrote the blog post, forgot to put a title, never got around to it probably hasn't even got an image yet. I'll finish it off in a few days or so. Probably by the time that this video is on YouTube, that blog post will be on my blog. I invite you to come along to my blog, Stories of an Unschooling Family, and read it. I have other blog, blog posts about keeping teenagers safe from the dangers of the world. Come along and Share those too if you'd like to. The other thing is I've interviewed my girls uh, in my podcast and we have talked about these things, about keeping them safe, about not making rules. Um, maybe you'd find those in interviews very interesting. I hope so. So, yes, I'll put some links on my blog. Maybe, maybe I'll make some show notes for this particular video. You can go over to my blog and find the links to the podcast blog posts and to the podcast. So I'd just like to thank you for watching this video and until next time, trust, respect and love unconditionally.